at 6.01 p.m. Call to order the regular meeting of the Bawatic City Council. It is Monday, October 5th, 2020. And as I said, now it's 6.02 p.m. Uh, pursuant to Minnesota statute uh, 13D.021, this meeting is being conducted by electronic means uh, in keeping with the, the governor's declaration of a state of emergency. Uh, as a result, uh, any actions the council takes tonight will be conducted by a roll call vote. Uh, again, in keeping with, uh, with the statute, the, the one exception will be when we uh, adjourn the, the meeting this evening. And just to make it known, uh, this council will uh, have a special session, a special meeting tonight at the conclusion of this regular meeting. Shannon, when you're ready, could you conduct a roll call? Councilor Mackey? Here. Senator Reed? Here. Kovadovich? Here. Kordach? Here. Mayor Wycombe? Here. Uh, welcome, everybody. You have in front of you somewhere, uh, there was a, an amended agenda that was sent out uh, just a little before 5 p.m. So I'm hoping everybody's uh, got access to that. That's what I'm working from. There wasn't huge changes. Uh, I think a little bit of clearing up uh, some stuff. So with that in mind, uh, and it does say amended uh, on the top. Uh, if you, <laughs> uh, of course, on my on my screen that's that's upside down, um, but uh, it does say amended. It's highlighted there. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as pre the amended version of the agenda that was presented at uh, 5 p.m.? I'll make, make a motion to approve it. Agenda. Uh, I think it was Councilor Bradach and Councilor Mackey, but I'm not sure of the order. Uh, Shannon will make that executive uh, decision as she does the minutes. Call Jenny Reagan. Call from Jenny Reagan. So we need somebody muted. Uh, that should be Larry. Am I muted? No. Somebody keeps making noise. Okay. Uh, when you're ready, Shannon, please do the roll call for the approval of the agenda. Councilor Mackey? Aye. Senator Eagy? Aye. Kovadovich? Aye. Aye. Mayor Wakem? Aye. Motion is carried and the agenda is uh, adopted. Council in front of you, presumably, uh, that's may or may not be correct. Uh, you have the materials for this evening's consent agenda. One of the changes was the addition or the inclusion of the uh, building inspector uh, report, which was not uh, sent out to you with the original packet. It didn't change any of the numbering. It just made sure that it was included. So is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda as presented or were there items that you wish to have pulled for further discussion later in the meeting? I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved by Councilor Kavada, but you have <coughs> support. I'll support. I believe that was Councilor Senarigi. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to make a comment. Uh, on the consent, I'm very happy with what's going on in this. Our public works reports, uh, all the reports are good. This monthly building inspection report, there's a lot of construction going on. And as Jeff noted, a lot of it's going on in the area where our pressurized sewer system needs more construction and it's happening up there. I'm very happy with this. Okay. Uh, hearing, seeing no further comments. Uh, Shannon, when you're ready, please do a roll call for the adoption of the consent agenda. Councilor Mack. Aye. Senator Aye. Aye. Bradach. Aye. Mayor Wycombe. Aye. Uh, motion is carried. 
the next item we're going to, we're, it's 6.06 .06 p.m. We're going to recess uh, to go into the nuisance hearing. And so uh, with that, uh, as I said, it's 6.06. .06, and the one item I have in my packet uh, relates to 301 First Avenue North. Uh, this was continued from a previous meeting. Uh, I think uh, Chief Teacher is with us. Jeff, uh, one of you want to bring us up to speed on this item? Uh, well, I've had some contact with the owner. Um, the last meeting, I believe the report was that there was uh, some desire to pursue uh, demolishing the building. And then there was another follow-up of the storage shed that was, or the, the storage unit that's parked on uh, First Avenue at the beginning of Lutz Road, however you want to term that. Um, I do. I do now have a, a letter to pursue a IRRB commercial demo grant and a demolition uh, permit application from that property owner. Uh, unfortunately, I, I believe the last time I checked, uh, that storage pod was still there. Um, so there's some additional follow-up that's going to be needed there. Um, there is room just in the backside of that that property to move that and have it out of the way. Um, Biggest concern being that it, it is it would be a hindrance to snow plowing when that starts uh, where it is sitting on the side of the road. So um, there is a there is a effort to pursue the demolition of that building by the owner. Um, so I think that'll move forward. The only thing is we'll have to um, follow up a little more firmly on that storage pod. Council, Jeff, I noticed in that report from the, the building inspector he talks about the they're waiting on their insurance is that still the case have they not sold um, their insurance yet i sort of um there is insurance uh you know insurance policy in place um when we do the demolition app grant application with the i rb that insurance will be um would be part of the match for that grant. Um, I don't. I don't have access to the insurance policy or what the payout is at this time. When they, um, when the grant application gets to that point, I Triple RB will ask what that amount is. Uh, but I do not know the, the amount of that. Other than I've been told that there there is a policy to pay out on it. Well, I just. I, I guess all I'm saying is. Doug mentioned in there that the reason that it's on hold is because of the insurance. It's really not, it's not the case. It's because we're doing the demo program, correct? Yeah, I, I mean, from Doug's point of view, he wouldn't really necessarily be involved in that other side. So I okay. think that's just, that was just kind of um, the original story that he had gotten. All right. I just want to clarify because so there, we all understand. So. And I, I think the reason Doug had that in there is because at one point there was an application, a building permit application started to renovate, to redo the building. And then that got changed to a demo, a demo because of insurance limits. Okay. So that could be what he's referring to. Okay. So should we continue this, just continue it then, knowing that she is in the process of trying to get something just leave it on for the next agenda or what? I think we have to continue it, don't we, Larry? That's kind of what we did this time, or yep. because they were making applications. I think, I think that's the only way you can do it to hold it open. Okay. Jeff, you mentioned the uh, storage thing, though, out on the street. I mean, is that something that we should get removed because we could potentially get snow by the end of the month? Um, yes. <laughs> And there actually, there is a possibility if the council uh, uh, declares it a nuisance and wants it abated, we may have the ability to move that. But the storage uh, unit thing isn't listed in the uh, public nuisance. Chief, I think that's the, <laughs> the fact that it's in the street is really an issue for yep. you folks and you can address that without any council action. Yes, it's in the, it's in the roadway. And uh, we were trying to work with them while they were trying to figure out if they demolish or not. But yeah, obviously when we get closer, we can come in with a uh, flatbed and just pull right up on there and get it out of there, so. There's a, I believe there's area right behind the place there that she could put it. Wouldn't be a big distance to take it. 
Is that something so no so we're gonna let Ty work with that and hold off on the council making any action to do that? Well don't we have to make a motion to continue the hearing? Yes. Yeah you do. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we continue the hearing for 301 First Avenue North, the nuisance hearing. Been moved by Councillor Bradach to continue the, the, the hearing. Is there support? Support. support. You pick, Shannon. Uh, Councillor Santariga Kavadovic. Uh, I suppose we could look at the tape and see who, who won, but uh, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon will be uh, very careful, I'm sure. <laughs> Any further we, discussion? Uh, yeah, uh, can we get a follow-up, a quick follow-up from Ty on um, last month's nuisances? So I've been working with Jeff on that. Uh, that one on Sixth Avenue, it does run. He did license it. However, <laughs> due to the condition, um, uh, it's it's definitely an eyesore. He moved the ATV, put it behind his bar. So now we got to do it on that. However, what I'm in that case. And also the one up on 8th is I'm going to be contacting uh, Attorney Lindsay, who does our prosecutions from Gilbert. And we're going to look at it, see if we can do a criminal type file on it. Uh, with the bank's property, we abated the, the property. However, since the last meeting, he's hauled in probably four or five times more stuff. Most of the initial stuff has been moved, was put on a trailer. However, it is accumulated, especially with the curbside pickup. I was... Would say he was busy shopping this weekend. And uh, yeah, I saw plenty of it on a trailer the last couple of days. Yeah, so pass, man. in that case, we're going to look into doing it on the criminal file on that, just because as soon as we clean it up, he's going to haul more stuff in. If we can get it in the criminal side, then the judge can potentially order that he has to re keep it, you know, keep it clean for a period of time. So, but that, right, well, that's right, going to be. What's the crime that's going to be charged? I, I believe in the ordinance we have a we have we can do a nuisance under state statute if we've done it in Gilbert now on repeated offenses because it's a habitual issue. So we go under a state statute, which is under a nuisance that a nuisance state statute is my understanding. All right, all right. So that's what we've charged under um, in Gilbert for uh, we get a lot of barking dog calls. You write them a ticket, they just pay it. For so many, we go all with a nuisance and then they have to appear before the judge. Basically a long form complaint. The, um, it, it had been brought up to me that um, the, the, the house on 8th is uh, accumulating quite the, the wood pile and anticipation of heating their, they, they, they believe that he's gonna heat his trailer with, with wood. And I just don't know how safe that is and if we can have uh, the fire department uh, quicken on call for that. Yeah, I, I think the wood in some regards is is a lot has accumulated in the last seven to ten days. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, we're talking probably a couple of dump truck loads. So, um, yeah, it's turned into uh, the, the depot location situation. So, so we'll work on it. We'll try to get some. This one's going to be the pain. I hate to say it. it's going to be the problem for us, but we'll we'll try to get it worked out. Hi. Is it my understanding that ATVs count as vehicles on the property in a nuisance hearing? Yes, and, I, and that same thing with that other one on six, he's accumulated two more vehicles since the last nuisance hearing. So one disappeared and he gained two more. So then there's now two Humvees on the property. Um, one which looks a little better than the other, looks more operational than the other yeah. one. So are we gonna pursue this with you? I mean, he's got, the yellow ATVs back. The the red one he moved ahead and covered it with a boat today. Um, he's he's on the edge of this thing here, and I I, I think with the ATVs he's over the limit because there's some vehicles in back too. Yeah, and and that's the other property too we're looking at. There's definitely some game playing. He's not the first time to be. This is not his first. Uh, time before the council in regards to the uh, nuisance. Um, and again, we're looking at that too, because it's been a habitual problem the last uh, four years, I believe. We're gonna look at that too, going for the state statute, we can get him on that too. Okay, all right. So I will have a full report by next council meeting. I should have, hopefully have 
all the properties rectified. Maybe not the problem taken care of, but at least a direction that we know that we're going to go. Okay, I appreciate that, Ty. Thank uh, you. If I could uh, pick up my computer and point it out the window, you could see the condition of the property over there, but <laughs> I'm not, this isn't pick upable, so I, I can't, can't give you a, a live visual feed. Could you zoom in with your iPhone for us? I probably could if it was that mission critical, but uh, since it's not on tonight's agenda, that doesn't seem quite as necessary. So there is a motion on the floor to uh, continue the, uh, the nuisance hearing for the property 301 First Avenue North. I think we must be ready to vote when Shannon's ready. Councilor Mackey? Aye. Senator Aye. Kovadovich? Aye. Radach? Aye. Mayor Wycombe? Aye. Motion is carried. I'm going to close the nu nuisance hearing and go back into our regular meeting. It is 6.18 p.m. And there is one presentation scheduled for this evening. Uh, Mr. J.J. Day, who I believe is uh, with us on Zoom this evening, he had uh, requested of, of Jeff that he be able to address the council tonight. So I'm going to uh, turn that over to him. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Uh, I just want to bring up, we had sent a letter with the sale of um, East Mesabi Sanitation kind of going around and we had been working with them previously on it. <clears throat> and we had sent a letter out to all the municipalities on the East Range, essentially, letting them know that, you know, I'm interested in, you know, giving a competitive bid or being heard as far as residential commercial garbage collection. Um, it was brought to my attention that this was, you know, part of the meeting. And from what I gather here is it looks like uh, this, this company now is trying to, or, or they purchased it as of September 1, but now they're trying to assume under another name and just kind of going through paperwork here from the city is that it basically states that it's not transferable by the contractor or the city. Um, <clears throat> the other couple things we saw and got pointed out, I guess, as we printed through is that there really isn't a contract in place and hasn't been since March 31st of 2004. Um, and kind of reading through the purchasing poly or, or po policy ordinances, et cetera, uh, it, it basically shows that it would have to go up for bid, I think. And I guess what I'm asking is that I'd like to be able to get a chance and uh, sit down and see what you guys are after, or if there's any possible way that you'd look at changes or anything to it. Um, just looking to try to show you who we are and what we can do for you guys as far as sanitation. So I'm going to speak about this first. I, I don't know how the council feels. So we're having an issue right now, sir, that we do not have a contract at all with Muggy and we, and yes, you're right, we did get a letter, but the discussion, we're gonna have a discussion tonight about our contract and what we can do, what's gonna happen. Um, I didn't know that, or as of now, I didn't know that we could do that. I, I, I it's gonna be up for discussion, I think, that. I find it very intriguing that we could try to get somebody else in here because if we are going to lose our our the uh, Masabi sanitation here soon. So that's my thought right now. I I guess I'd like to hear from some of the other council members. Well, uh, you know, if it if he actually promised and uh, and made good on putting that uh, that third row wheels down instead tearing up our alleys, our brand new alleys, that would be a, a huge uh, pro. Um, the, um, it's always been, I, I was always told that if with the city, if even if the, the contract is expired, it's in effect until we get a new one. Um, even though, I mean, like Chipper said, we didn't know that there's somebody else that's um, capable of, 
of servicing our needs over here. And that's sure. huge. Actually, we should be looking at that. Uh, if it can be a competitive thing where we can save a couple bucks, that's, that's better to our bottom line. So, um, and hopefully better than not that it's been bad service with the Savi East, but, um, you know, doesn't mean we can't change or look at it. I don't think there's any reason why we can't go out for some bids. We do it for other yeah. services. So, I mean, this is a, this is a time to probably go out for bids. We don't know what their services are going to be like either one of them. Um, so I don't know, Jeff, how you feel about that. In the meantime, what happens if we don't sign this and they say, well, then we're not going to be doing garbage service with you next week. What do we do? Larry, I guess I'd ask you too. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the contract stuff, but. Well, I, I have looked at and I talked to Jeff about it. Uh, the gentleman that's making the presentation right now, maybe we should table this or accept his presentation and discuss the entire item together down under the review of the contract. But uh, Jeff tells me that this contract has been out of place for years and it's just been on an oral contract. Maybe this is a good time to, to go out for bids. Maybe it is a good time to go out and take a look at what's out there. And to answer your question, Steve, is what do we do if he stops picking up garbage tomorrow? Well, that's kind of the danger of running without a contract. <laughs> yeah. And I suppose he could do that, but I, I doubt it very much. Can I, can I ask or say something or bring something up? It down here in the contract it states that um, there's, the contractor shall provide a forty thousand uh, dollar performance bond, and that should be renewed yearly. Is I read it somewhere earlier. I don't know if that's been followed through on or not. You know, and I I hate to say that that's what it's in place for, but hopefully it doesn't go that way for everybody's sake that they just pull the pin and walk away. And I, I highly doubt they would. But, you know, especially with a guy just purchasing it on September 1st, I would think he's gonna to try to make right across the board versus create a bad name for himself. Um, in the way I understand it, he's, he's not even, doesn't even reside up here on the range. He's down in the Twin Cities. So I wouldn't think he's gonna do that, but um, you know, whatever my word means, we won't let the town fill up with trash like Ty's <laughs> got to deal with at that address we were talking about earlier. <clears throat> So, JJ, what are you asking us to do? You want us to, I mean, I guess you're coming so, to us saying you want, you want consideration. And you want I, I do, and I guess I don't know how, I, I've had a hard time trying to understand how the program is currently run. Um, you know, talking with some, you know, business owners, we've been approached over the years, and I kind of just had a gentleman's agreement that, hey, we're not stepping on anybody's toes type thing. And, but I've never been able to understand how, how does a commercial customer work between the city? Um, residentially, I understand to a degree that they're going and buying bags, placing them out in the alley. I guess what I'd like to be able to see is what is it that you need to meet your needs? And then uh, whether I, you know, whether it's a proposal on those needs or we could potentially talk at some different options and maybe uh, kind of bring this thing to the, you know, 2021 before we realize and Maybe there's different things that can clean up town a little bit more or whatever. I, I'm open to anything and everything to sit down and talk. So I just, I wanted to make sure I got in front of you guys before things kind of went the other way. So. Well, are we don't coaching do. all the towns that are on this contract with the Masabi Sanitation or just us or what? S say that again. I, you broke are up. Are you approaching, okay, he has a contract with many towns. Are you approaching all the towns or just? I, I have. Okay. So I did. I sent out a letter, all... sent out a letter to everybody. Okay. So the question I have then is, are you aware of the county rules and regs for tipping fees and all that stuff? Because that's part of our contract too, that we had. Absolutely. We, you know, we do the city of Ely, everything from Ely. I mean, we're picking up right around the outskirts of town and I actually currently run the landfill for St. Louis County. Um, I had purchased Kangas excavating just about a year ago. So we're running the landfill for St. Louis County and the entire recycling program. So 
we're very into it, I guess, if you want to call it that. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. And that some of the questions I guess I have is, I know on his other contracts, the municipalities are paying for the disposal fee. That's kind of foreign to me in, in the other aspects or contracts that we have, but it's nothing that we can't look at and say, hey, we can continue on that or whatever. So those are the types of things I'm curious if, if you just want to leave things alone and it goes out for bid or again, that's why I'm saying I'm open to all of that stuff. Mr. Mayor, maybe we should uh, just yep. accept this input now and discuss this. The items that uh, the gentleman's talking about now would very well go into bid specs if we actually decide to go that way. You are correct, and, and it's not been the practice of the council to take any action on on present on this portion of the agenda. Uh, we we do have a, a more, I guess, comprehensive discussion coming up in a little bit while, a little while. But this has provided us, I think, with some significant input in terms of uh, what our options might be. So I, I think this will all be taken into account when we when we come to the actual business item in a few minutes. Are you going to stick around for that, JJ? I, I absolutely can if you'd like me to, no problem. Well, I think if you're interested, I think it's in your best interest to do it. Uh, yeah. So if we have any questions, absolutely. we can I'm ask here. you. So. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Thank Jeff, you. Th that was the only one that was scheduled? Yes. And I don't see anything under new business. I'm moving down the agenda. So I'm going to move us right into item eight on the agenda, which is uh, new business. Uh, first item, item A, is resolution 2020-29-29, accepting St. Louis County CARES Act block election grant funds. This is one of those kind of kind of convoluted ones, but uh, you want to walk us through, Jeff? Uh, so this is uh, funding specific to election safety. Uh, St. Louis County is uh, agreeing to pick up the 20% match on that on that grant amount, um, and there's a, a fairly straightforward uh, little Q and A on what those uh, costs could be, uh, what the the funds could be used for, um, and and very easily we definitely would have that amount in costs to to cover with this grant. Uh, between safety and cleaning supplies, notification costs, um, any additional help to get some of these things, some of the uh, uh, vote by mail or, or uh, early voting out. Um, that's definitely definitely funding we could use to, to help keep this election on track and try to cover all the, all the bases with safety. Council, your wishes? I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution 2020-29, accepting the St. Louis County CARES Act block election grant funds. I'll support. I have a motion by Councilor Bradach, supported by Councilor Mackey, and the city administrator is confident that we can spend $763. <laughs> but every, everything helps. Any further discussion? Shannon, when you're ready, please. Councilor Mackey. Aye. Fenerigi. Aye. Vladovich. Aye. Bradach. Aye. Mayor Wycombe. Aye. Uh, the motion is carried and the resolution is adopted. Which moves us to item 8B, resolution 2020-30. Authorizing an application to the Minnesota Department of Transportation's Transportation Alternatives Grant Program. And again, Jeff, you had some some background context here in there for us. Anything to add? Uh, this is the we applied for this program a few years ago, and we first started in our Main Street project and weren't awarded at that time. Um, just in the last uh, week or two. Um, I got separate notifications from uh, Mike Larson at SEH, who um, is our, our designated person to go after funding for these projects, uh, and also Senator uh, Tomasoni, uh, a quick note suggesting that we look into this. So um, we'd like to get going on, a, on an application for funding towards our Main Street project. Uh, the rules are laid out in the guidebook. Uh, however, this is kind of a this is a unique year down at the down at the Capitol, so um, it's 
it's possible that there might be some uh, some flexibility on the program. There was some timing issues that kind of worked against us in the past, um, but we would like to get an application in there to get it on the radar and start talking to uh, to the state about it. Jeff, if we were awarded this, where would you see us using this money? Where would you recommend us using it? Um, so plan A, or uh, well, let's see, yeah, the, the more likely one is some is the stuff that we've kind of looked at as some of those outside the initial uh, construction project things. Uh, if you remember, we, we held over some of those costs that, uh, you know, some of the, the landscaping things or some of the trail stuff um, in the right of way um, because of the way that worked with our cost split with MnDOT. Um, so that would be the first, uh, the first or the most likely swipe. Um, the other one would be is if they do change this program around enough to just use it for general, uh, for general construction, we could look at it using for the cost share. That's, that's certainly not the, the original intent of the grant, but once we get in there, it may be possible to kind of move stuff around depending on what the state's looking at this year. Um, it's uncertainty is always tough, but at this point, it's kind of all bets are off as far as the, the funding that the state will be putting out. So oh, did not we have a funding program that we were going to get involved for landscaping uh, down the line here, planting of trees and stuff. This is not part of that though, right? Um, this is through the county. It's not really part of it. There's a separate one. That's the landscape partnership program. Uh, that's the one that pays for uh, the materials for, for landscaping. And then our match is, is the installation and, and the upkeep. Uh, and then there is additional funding for that type of stuff through uh, through a few other state programs, but this this is a um, this is its own project. It's it's not underneath that same umbrella of that landscape partnership stuff. But that landscape partnership stuff, part of the match could be our public works doing some of the work, planting the trees, etc. Correct? Volunteers. Volunteers. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. You know, kind of just anything falling under the in-kind uh, tag. You know, it's that's the type of thing. You don't necessarily have to have cash, but you can, you can have the in-kind yeah. match, which is our people installing it, taking care of it, um, uh, the maintenance and upkeep. Are we applying for that grant? I know that's not part of this one, but just curious. I thought we were in on that. We were. Um, that one will come when we kind of identify that project a little more in detail. I did have a quick. Uh, quick meeting and a quick walk around the project with the MnDOT project engineer and the landscape architect on this project um, to kind of get them both brought up to speed. We did switch project engineers last uh, or earlier this summer with the uh, retirement to Brian Larson and there's a new landscape architect that's been assigned to this project. So um, to, to get Alex Parrots, the, the project engineer, a, a little more familiar with that and then to get uh, Chris Oaks, the landscape architect, um, up here to see it in person and kind of take a look at what we're doing uh, and, and you know, see in person versus just the plans. Um, and then they were going to uh, look at calendars and try to set something up for a meeting of our Main Street Task Force to, to start putting that stuff together. Uh, at that point, that's when we start looking at that landscape partnership program. Yeah. I, did, I did talk to him, too, the new project engineer, when, after I talked to you, Jeff, so... Okay. I was gonna say that we're going for with the grant. I'm sorry, there was. Is there an amount of money that we're going for with the grant? Um. For yeah, I'm say it in there. You're back on the on the one the resolutions for the transport transportation alternatives. Yes, correct. Um. Probably up to a five hundred thousand dollar application. That would be really unusual to get that, but a five hundred thousand dollar application with some expectation of getting more like two hundred or two fifty. Okay. I think oh, Jeff, Jeff uh, part of this thing to think about, excuse me, doing the landscaping talk, um, is remember that we don't have any water spigots on Main Street, so what we're going to need to find a. Um, uh, some kind of water tank to water any kind of new stuff when that comes in. Mm -hmm. Our fire trucks. 
Well, I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion to pass resolution 2020-30 August application for grant. What's that? I got another question here on this. So oh. is, is the railroad authority <laughs> going to be involved in this too? I know I've asked several times about Bob Ansling getting involved with the trail, bike trails and stuff. Is this part of this also? I don't think so. Not, uh, I guess, not by the by the letter of it. It's it's associated, but that's that wouldn't fall under this program. Well, part of our Main Street Task Force, you know, we're going to be involved in this. I I think that we should pursue that part of it because uh, I guess it just kind of died on the vine, and I'm not I'm not happy about it. Um. I think we got to get them back into this 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 project. Well, from what I've found with Bob Manzalene is until they're ready to move, we can ask all we want, and they're just not going to do anything until they have the money and all the evening. So yeah, but they had the money at one time. They had the plans and everything. We just it just dropped off. I I don't understand that. I never got up. Good well, I think we could ask we could ask Jeff to call him and see if he'd give us a presentation or an update at our well when we have there. our Main Street committee thing here. Yeah, that's what I would like yeah. to see. I think we should well, keep in mind. Fine. Go ahead, Jim. I was just gonna say I, I think we should keep in mind that uh, we have an obligation to pursue every possible avenue for any kind of funding and Fun. so I, I don't think we should pass up any opportunity. And I apparently I was cutting off Councilor Bradach as he was prepared to make a motion. That's the reason I want to make a motion so that we do pass the resolution 2020-30 authorizing an application to the Minnesota Department of Transportation's Transportation Alternatives Grant Program grant. So I'll make that motion. I'll okay. support. Been moved by Councilor Bradach, supported by Councilor Mackey. Is there additional discussion? I didn't want to cut off anybody, but uh, uh, Councilor Bradage is correct. We're probably better off making the motion and then discussing rather than discussing before we make a motion. Yeah, I, I agree we need to talk to Bob, but I mean, it has nothing to do with this grant application at this time. So, but we surely should ask him, like Chipper said, I, th I think we should get him at one of our meetings, Jeff, or ask him if he's got an update for us of some sort. And let's see, <laughs> and and we can we can certainly do that. And I don't want to. Um, I guess I don't want to dash hopes or set people up for for false expectations either. <laughs> uh, I'm wrapping up my 13th summer here, and I think it's 13 summers in a row of the connection will be completed this summer, um, and that's. Uh, I, I think that's a function of the the complexity of the trail uh, combined with federal funding. Uh, they have been hindered several times over uh, the the plans and the will and the ability to go forward and the availability of funding just not quite lining up. There is a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Shannon, when you're ready, please. Councilor Mackey? Aye. <laughs> Marigi? Aye. Vladovich? Aye. Bradach? Aye. Mayor Wakeham? Aye. Motion is carried and the resolution is adopted. I think we'll be con we will continue looking for any kind of funding avenues that we possibly can. Uh, and I'll, I Sorry. I brought it up real quickly in the uh, in the introduction there, but we will be working with, um, you know, along with our engineering contract with SEH, uh, Mike Larson has contacted me and, and we've talked a few times on getting something together. So we'll be, we'll be working with their staff to, to try to put together the best application we can. Thank you. Item 8C, resolution 2020-31-31 authorizing an application to the Minnesota Department of Public Safety's 
fire department turnout gear washer slash extractor slash dryer grant program. Jeff provided us some background here. Uh, anything in addition? Uh, and if there are questions, I believe uh, Chief Mackey is, is available if, if you have any questions for him. Jeff, is this uh, funding that they're talking about in this um, you're recommending us approving it because you have the money allocated in that equipment line budget item for from last year you have funds uh, yes there there is money in the equipment line item and getting this grant would and there's any number of things we could use that for um, but being able to lever leverage it against this grant money would would definitely bring that up to the top of the priority list and so you're recommending it yes I guess I'll make another motion to approve 2020-31 to uh, authorize the application of this grant. So. I'll support again. Okay. Uh, motion by Councilor Badat, supported by Councilor Mackey to adopt resolution 2020-31. Any further discussion, questions? I'm sure the chief is dying to answer any questions that you have. He can even tell you what color the uh, extractor uh, would be. Can we get SCH to give him a hand with that, uh, with this one too? <laughs> Danny, can you tell me, is, it, is that like just a fancy washer and dryer or what is it? I mean, it's an extractor, but. Yeah, so the, are you, are you able to hear me all right? Yeah, yep. yeah we can. Okay, yeah, the, the washer, it, it is a high efficiency, it's, it's particular, particularly efficient for taking out the carcinogens, the soot and the stuff that gets embedded in the gear. So you get that stuff into the washer and it, it basically decontaminates it. And the, uh, the dryer is just basically you're using that to speed up that process with several layers of gear. Um, when, when you take your turnout coat apart and your pants apart, there's actually an inner and outer shell. Um, so when you start to look at what turnout gear consists of, it's, it's multiple pieces per set. So that's to speed up the efficiency of that and dry it thoroughly so you can put it back away. Um, so you don't have to worry about it molding and et cetera. Okay. The big focus on this uh, particular equipment is the, uh, the cancer awareness and the removing of the carcinogens um, out of the gear. You'll notice if we uh, if we hang our stuff up after a, a a good you know structure fire that's lasted several hours, the folks that are interior that gear will off gas for days later. Uh, this would be bringing it back. You get it bagged and on scene, and then you throw it in this washer to get that help get that stuff out of the cabs and get it out of the equipment and off of our people and and get the stuff cleaned and put back in service as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I believe we have a motion and a second. Councillor Mackey? Aye. Senator Rigi? Aye. Kovadovich? Aye. Bradach? Aye. Mayor Wakeham? Aye. Motion is carried and the resolution is adopted. Okay, we've circled now back to the discussion about uh, uh, East Mississippi sanitation and what we wish to do. Jeff, you want to kick us off with any kind of context? Uh, I think you have a lot of it in the packet. Yeah, so, so the background is we have talked about the, the letter that we received asking for the transfer of a, of a contract for garbage services. Um, and I actually, I had to dig quite a bit to find the one uh, from 1999 to 2004. Um, that's the last written documentation I have of any type of a contract. Other than that, the, the agreement we've had has been um, the garbage was, was picked up each week and the bill was paid each month. Other than that, it, it, hasn't, uh, it hasn't gone by a strict contract. Um, and like I said, uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, I'm wrapping up my 13th summer here, showed up in 07. Um, never really dealt with, uh, never dealt with this contract before, with this written contract. Okay. 
Well, I guess I'll speak up. I'm I'm in agreement with Pete. I think it doesn't hurt to go out for um, consideration to other uh, vendors that can supply the service. Um, JJ, just so you know, the one thing that we did quite a few years ago was the reason we went to Bawabic Bags was we had mm -hmm. some people that had families of six kids and we had widows that had one person and it was a way to try to make it somewhat fair to those that didn't use as much garbage because if they went to the dump themselves, they wouldn't be paying as much as the person that had six kids that went to the dump. So it was a way to, to try to make it fair. Now, there's probably other ways of doing it. I mean, I know I've heard from other people already have said, why don't you do away with the bags and do some type of tags on the bag where you could buy a tag that you tag it somehow because a lot of people I know in town don't like using the Blavik bags because they leak sometimes. So I've heard people say, well, I put it in a regular bag and then I put that bag in a Blavik bag so it gets picked up. And I just had somebody recommend to me a citizen saying, why don't you go to some type of tag and let everybody buy their own bags because they're cheaper, but still buy a zip tie or a, some other mechanism to tag or, it's just, I think the yellow bags are an easy way to identify that you paid for the bag. But I do think there's other things we could consider as a council to try to, because I do know those bags do leak from time to time. From time to time. <laughs> More like all the time. I yeah, have to so. find it like another bag. Otherwise they are gonna leak. Yeah, right. so I mean that's an option is to try to do some type of and maybe the, the tags, the tags that were on the bag, you know, I mean it, it can be a tag that goes around and self sticks around the top of the bag once you tie it. And because they won't pick up in the past. If you didn't have it in a yellow bag, you don't get your stuff picked up. So it was a quick, easy way for the garbage people to identify whether or not you. But it might save the taxpayer some money too if we don't force them to buy our bags and then they're buying regular bags like Mindy just said anyway. It's just just it's it's been my experience. Did we get a letter from? Um, Mr. Days, he, he said that he sent a letter to the city or what? Uh, there was a letter previously that asked for a copy of the contract and then for inclusion in, uh, in any uh, public bidding process. Okay. I was gonna say, I was gonna add that it's been my experience. Um, I've got a, some of the 30 some gallon uh, garbage cans. I put the bag and the handle, they'll take the bag and they'll empty the, the can. Um, I've also wrapped um, the, the bag around something else and they've cake in it. Um, as long as it looks like it would fit in the bag, but I haven't put in the effort of putting it in the bag. And otherwise I always end up double bagging my stuff. So in the house we use a bigger bag and, and we we'll fill it up and uh, throw it in the can out in the garage. So. I guess I'd ask. But I like the idea of the Steve. Yeah, that's I, I guess I asked JJ, how do they do it in Ely? So we used to do what we called was a sticker program. And what that was based off of, there was two stickers. Um, being we're talking just in town, so out of town or out of city limits is irrelevant. But we would do a sticker for 15 pounds or 30 pounds. And essentially, when I say sticker, just like you said, you can take that sticker and wrap it around the grab handles of the bag. Um, pros and cons, I definitely understand the concern for that single individual that's living alone and produces essentially just one bag for the week or week and a half, or two weeks, whatever it may be. Um, so we, or we, we went away from that sticker program probably five to six years ago. And what we now provide is a residential garbage can, either a 32 gallon or a 64 gallon cart on wheels. Um, provide that to each individual residence. And then the way we operate in Ely is then I currently bill the individual. Um, uh, we bill out in, by the quarter. 
just to keep billing, you know, keep the level of billing down. And uh, it's, it's worked well. You know, we don't tend to go chasing that money or, or uh, uh, looking for the people. Um, you know, I think it's worked well in a lot of different aspects. It cleans up town. You don't have a bunch of loose bags. Like you said, if somebody doesn't put out that yellow bag, that trash gets left and potentially tore up by the birds or whatever. Um, I, I know we've had nothing but great feedback to essentially go to all carts across the range that where we provide our service. So, you know, that's an option. Um, you know, that, that would be more in tune with where everybody is in, in today's age. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, like I said, that's, there's a lot of different options. It all depends on which way you all would like to see things go or potentially see them go. And we can design or draft the program according to that. But, but now you're going to have to pass the cost of that garbage can on to somebody. I mean, obviously, you're not going to provide them for free. It's going to get absorbed somewhere, you know, versus everybody already right. has garbage cans. Yep. And, and that's a definite solid point that we had in the past as well, is that well, that cart cost does get essentially absorbed over time. And it's a, it's a five to six year payback, yeah. um, you know, on our end. Um, and then that was some of the other hang up that people would, well, we already got our own garbage can. So, you know, again, the, the bag program's not bad. Um, I guess I don't think it's the greatest thing for the environment to buy a bag, to put another bag into a bag, but it's obviously worked. Um, Again, the sticker program can work. That doesn't have to be based off of weight. It could be essentially just replacing that bag or, or a tag. There's companies in the industry that make them, uh, whether you want it to be a sticker or you want it to be, like you said, a, a tag with a tie or um, kind of a uh, twist tie, so to speak. So there's options. I'm just throwing out there because if we're going to go out bidding, we sh you know, I had somebody ask me that and I said I would bring it up. I'd be fine with staying with the bags too. Uh, yeah. And in town, we have a whole lot of uh, garbage pirates uh, between, um, I, I can tell you, there's every neighbor I've got along uh, First Street there um, throws their trash in the uh, dumpster at the pavilion. I mean, every, every day for pickup, it's completely full. And um, but yet we have no events going on with the pavilion. Um, you know, um, from talking to Ron, he said, oh, there's people from town going and dumping their trash out of the campground. Um, not that this was something in Masabi, um, East Masabi can take care of or even JJ, but um, we should maybe even look at, a, we should have looked at a couple months ago, I guess, I, but until summer, I didn't see it. Um, but do we pull that garbage can out of um, the pavilion? Well, now that you say that, Pete, it almost makes sense to have the garbage cans because not everybody's going to pay for it, and they're not going to go shoving in everybody else's dumpster because they're already paying for that. Yep. But right, right now they're not paying for it because they don't go buy the bag, and then they take their bag and throw it in somebody else's. I we see it behind our store too, so that was mm -hmm. the big reason why we went to that in Ely, and you know, there's. Again, I would say a majority of our dumpsters in the city of Ely limits, uh, we provide bars and locks. Yes, it's not the most convenient thing for the customer to go and unlock that container, but, um, you know, being very, you know, tourism or the people coming up for the summer months in their cabins, that's exactly what they're doing is abusing the city parks. They pulled them away, you know, but the holiday gas stations that they were getting thoroughly abused. So, like I said, a majority of the containers up there are locked. And then, like you said, the, the residential cart, then they are responsible for it because they are paying for it themselves. The only downside to locking that we've talked about before, or we've talked about at our store, is now people are going to throw their garbage somewhere else. And we don't want them throwing it off the side of the road or in the woods or somewhere else, I guess, if it throws an extra bag in our dumpster. But it would stop the residents if they were paying for a can they would use their can because it's not worth the effort to drive down to throw. And Chipper, you know a few people in town that take their garbage and throw it in dumpsters because they don't want to buy the bags. Yeah. That's the ones that are real the most on this whole thing right now. Is the ones that are doing that right now. And Do you ever see that. theft of the garbage bins that people are renting or using? 
No, we'll at times get a phone call that somebody's been is missing, but it comes down to somebody who's having fun on an evening and drug it, drug it down the alleyway or something like that. But they're all serialized property. So there's a, a serial number a hot stamped in the front of the cart. And then that serial number is attached to that customer's account. Yeah. So if it does go missing, we identify it and bring it back. Um, to be honest, I, I don't know that we've had one stolen. People might leave town and think they can take it with them. Um, that's maybe happened a couple times, but nothing that's been alarming at, at all. It seems to me what we're really tasked with with this agenda item is deciding how what the process we want to follow for identifying who is going to be picking up our, our trash. Uh, well, it's helpful to have a conversation about what the methodology would be of the actual trash pickup. I think what we're faced with tonight is how do you want to proceed with this? What kind of process do you want to put in place? It's been suggested that now that we know that there's at least two entities out there that might be interested in this, we should figure out how we're going to uh, uh, probably solicit some sort of bids or proposals. Would we uh, want to have a special meeting in the near future here to formulate the uh, RFP and and then get that submitted? Uh, we would have to put something together if, because I'm, I'm guessing Mr. Day and anybody else would want something they actually have to respond to uh, if we're going to be able to compare apples to apples. Mr. Mayor, when you're putting together a proposal like this for going out for RFPs, all the different charges and costs and who's going to buy the bags and who's going to buy the containers has to be put into the RFP. So maybe a committee or a group, a subgroup, should be comparing all of these costs. You can probably get them from Mr. Day or East Sanitation, but we get all the costs together, then we'll know what kind of process we want to put out for proposals. I think that's a good idea. And the I think the rule of thumb is whoever's talked the most on this topic ends up on the committee. That's somewhere in statute, isn't it, Larry? Yeah, but I was doing a little talking and I'm not going to be on that committee. <laughs> no, I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see the okay. camera just went off here. <laughs> I'd be yeah, happy to work with Kathy us. Pradach, too. Oh, he's <laughs> really back on again. <laughs> And, and before, before we have a committee, you do you want that? You seem before, quite knowledgeable about this. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'll sit on the committee to, to talk to JJ about and see what they do up in Ely. And I mean, I'd like to know more about uh, what they're doing, what their costs are, what's it costing the residents. You know, and I think, Jeff, you should sit on there too, because we should be able to find out, you know, kind of look at what are we paying now between, uh, on our monthly utility bills and bags for an average family, and we can kind of see if it's going to go up considerably. Well, then maybe it's not an option for us to do that. But I am liking this can thing more and more just because I think it will stop. Unfortunately, you get a few people that wreck it for everybody else, and then you end up having to do something to, to stop those people from abusing it. And, I mean, and I think Jeff can do some, some, it's easy for me to assign work to Jeff, uh, but he can kind of collect some, some data as it were, you know, what, what's being done, what are things costing, what is Ely doing? Jeff's pretty well suited to be able to, to gather that for the committee. So were you actually volunteering? In the meantime, we should also. Sorry, Larry, go ahead. In the meantime, we should be writing to East Masaba Sanitation that we don't have any contract to transfer and he's more than likely wanting to bid on the next one or his purchaser. Well, could we not just tell them that we don't have a contract and we are currently evaluating going out for bids? Exactly, for that that's, what I, that's what I meant, Steve. Yeah, okay. So, so in the meantime, there was really nothing to vote on this other than instructing Jeff, I suppose, to notify them that we're going to work on going up for a proposal since we don't have a contract with them. Uh, I think that's a motion. May Mayor, would you be, would, could you maybe look for a, a motion to refer that to subcommittee or, or sure. delegate that to subcommittee? Yeah. 
I, I think that's uh, uh, a good idea. Were you were you actually volunteering, Councillor Bradach? If was. there is be a committee, uh, I did. You willing? Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> If we're doing it by Zoom, I, I can certainly participate, uh, which I presume we're going to be doing just for people's schedules. So uh, there's a motion to refer this back to uh, uh, an ad hoc committee to bring some recommendations for uh, request for proposal or some sort of specifications at, at a future meeting. Is that a motion somebody is prepared to make? Pete, did you make that motion? I heard you start to say something. No, I said I think that Steve was making a motion with what he was saying. Oh, uh, oh I thought I thought you said you were making a motion. Nope. I'll make a motion that we recommend it to an ad hoc committee to to take a look at this uh, garbage service and we can go up for bids. And communicate with the current provider as to what we're doing. And the community have Jeff communicate with the current provider. Yeah. Okay, there's more. Were you were you supporting that council center? E? Yes, I am. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Can we maybe ask if any of the citizens would be interested in getting on that also? Maybe put that on our our uh, web page or something or. We can. I would. I would want to. Not that everybody's chomping at the bit to talk about sanitation pickup, but I would want to limit the numbers. I don't want it to get too sure. unruly. One yeah. or two, maybe more. Yeah. I'm certainly open to that, and I. I don't think that the, the Councilor Bradach's motion and Councilor Senarigi's second preclude any of that. I mean, I think the first thing we have to do is get Jeff to gather some information. Yeah. I'd like to hear more about what Ely's doing, what JJ is doing at Ely. Um, what some of our other neighbors are doing. What's that? And what some of our other neighbors. Yeah, I mean. What the trends are for, yeah. It's kind of hard to compare what we already have to something else unless we know what that something else is. So. Yep. Right now, do we, I know that, how far, how far of an area do we do? I mean, all the commercial pay their own. That doesn't go through the city at all currently. That's all direct to Muggy. Muggy must bill them, correct, Jeff? Uh, no, we still bill commercial. We bill, we? bill them on the, for the dumpster, though. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so that is you're going back to that whole bag thing with the the, the cost and the and the quality of the bags. Um, that's come up in the past. To why why do they pay more for bags that aren't as good as what you might uh, get at the grocery store or something like that? Those are effectively the meter. You know, water. You have a meter that spins. Garbage. You have a bag that acts as the meter. Um, so then on the commercial side, they would not use those bags. They just pay. Um, they just pay to have that dumpster. Okay. And there, there have been, I can't think of it at the top of my head, there have been people that have, that have just opted out. Um, uh, some of the resorts and stuff in the Giants Ridge area, they hauled their stuff to the dump and, and they weren't customers. So we didn't charge them on the utility bill? Nope. I thought part of the reason for the, the doesn't everybody pay a, a portion for the use of the St. Louis County landfill and then we pay per bag for tipping? Yeah, and that, so that is, that's one of the things that makes it um, kind of convoluted to discuss is there's, there's different charges on there. Part of it is St. Louis, St. Louis County sends the city a parcel count and they say this is how many parcels we think you have in the city and this is we're going to this is where you're going to bill you based on that. And if, if you believe it's wrong or you disagree, you got to square that away with the county. Otherwise, then they, they bill you for the use of the landfill on that per parcel basis. And we pass that along. Which is no different than when you live in rural townships, you pay 
it on your property taxes for that. Yeah, they've outside. got that special investment line near the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Here we've got, got a motion on the floor. And I sense must be ready to vote. Uh, Shannon, when you're ready, please. Councilor Mackey. Aye. Senator Aye. Pavadovich. Aye. Bradach. Aye. Mayor Wycombe. Aye. Motion is carried and uh, we'll start gathering some information and be in contact with the potential uh, contractors. Item uh, E is the uh, was the item that was added to this evening's agenda. So I don't know if everybody has the uh, approval of third pay application for the car wash entrance realignment. Jim, real quick, can I just thank JJ for sticking around? So thank you guys for listening to me. I appreciate the time tonight. Yeah. I'm sure it's the most fun you've had all week. Hey, yeah. it's my birthday tonight. It's the best birthday I've had. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Yep. So, Jeff, you want to walk us? Does everybody have the uh, the document, or do you want uh, Jeff to share his screen? Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Should have warned you. Uh, all I have is the I, – I don't have any details other than the cover page. It was in – it was in the – wasn't in that last email? For it. So what I've got uh, is probably what everybody else has. As, as uh, Pete said, the cover page, the city engineer has reviewed Ulam Brothers' third application for payment in the amount of $40,314.63 and is recommending approval. And this, of course, was bid separately from the MnDOT to Highway 135 reconstruction. Jeff, I have a motion to pay the estimate number three for car wash. I'm looking at it on my iPhone here. There is no resolution number or anything, but okay, I'll make the motion. Okay. Moved by Councilor Santorigi. If somebody will. No, no, support it. Support me. I'll support it though. Councilor Cabado, it's supported by Councilor Santorigi. Now we can discuss. Sorry about that. Yeah. Jeff, have you actually gone down there and made sure that all the black toppings done the way that we everything's been blended in back to the car wash and you know I I've and, been uh, down there almost every day looking at that project, Steve, and I'm actually pretty impressed with how good it looks. And I thought yeah, it looks good, but I just wonder if anybody like, went down there. Huh? I just want to make sure somebody's been down there to actually look at it to make sure that that uh, before we approve this, that yes, it's meets our approval. We were told that uh, Eric would be making an appearance okay. here and there on it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, and sorry, I wasn't ducking the question. I was just pulling it up so I could share the screen with the actual application. Um, I have been down there. I haven't closely inspected it, but SEH has had uh their field observer down there sometimes it was eric hendrickson and sometimes it was um, um blank on the other guy's name um but they do have somebody on site checking that out and um kind of watching over the ewan guys shoulder and they're recommending it so yes okay that's my only question okay there, there is a motion on the on the floor is there any further discussion Everybody knows what they're voting on. Uh, Shannon, when you're ready, please. Councilor Mackey. Aye. Senator Rigi. Aye. Kovadovich. Aye. Bradach. Aye. Mayor Wycombe. Aye. Motion is carried. I believe that com uh, completes all the news, new business on tonight's agenda. Jeff, I didn't see any uh, communications in the packet, so I'm presuming there were none. Uh, there were no communications, and I'm not sure if, uh, I, don't, I guess I don't know if there's a better spot on the, uh, on the agenda. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen, and you probably haven't, there is an IRRB. Uh, the fall board meeting is tomorrow. The city of Wavik is on the agenda for a uh, approval of a $250,000 grant towards Main Street on that agenda. Uh, it's 
Uh, three o'clock tomorrow. Um, it's on Zoom. I, I guess I don't know for sure if it's only Zoom, um, but it is it, it, it is a, a virtual meeting. Yeah, if you if you go to the IRRR Iron Range Resources website and and click on board, it'll give you the uh, the coordinates for for tomorrow's meeting. And as Jeff says, it's at three o'clock. So I think both Jeff and I are planning to zoom in so that if there are any questions for Bawabic that uh, we can address those. How does that work if uh, you have more than two, oh, if we have more than two people being at supposed to meeting, it's okay, because it's not, not our meeting. Not our meeting, okay. And we're, we're not, we don't vote on anything or take or have any action that we would take. I'm waiting for the uh, city attorney to to blanch, but <laughs> it doesn't appear to have happened. No, no problem. Thank you. So that that's communications, uh, mayor and council members. Uh, I'll start with Councilor Mack. Anything you want to bring before the council this evening? Uh, just wondering with coronavirus, and I know I think it's I've seen it in at least my Facebook feed and other people asking questions. Uh, not necessarily in Biwabic, but for trick or treating, for, are we going to have to do anything in town regarding trick or treating? I don't know if we can stop people from doing it, if that's what you're asking. No, I, I know like, some places are more concerned than others, not necessarily around here, just since it seems to be coming up on Facebook a lot, uh, not necessarily around here again, but. I didn't know if we needed to address it in any way, shape, or form. I know I myself am getting one of those uh, long PVC tubes, and I'm going to shoot the candy down that and let kids come up and still get their candy from us. I, you know, um, but as a city, I, I, I don't know if we would, if we want to try and kill the great pumpkin or not. Jeff has the uh, East Range Committee rep. Uh, the response team met lately and if so have they touched on this uh, we have not had a meeting in a while but this uh, there's kind of a growing list of questions that are coming up so um, probably uh, I will contact the the chair of that committee um, I'm the, the vice chair of the committee but I'll contact the chair about getting something uh, something to get other questions um, the other one there is there is some more questions coming up about opening up different buildings in different communities so we have a few things to discuss and all look like a little bunch bunch of little bank robbers coming to our houses <laughs> i did i did see a funny one the other day from a single guy i know he said <clears throat> posted something about he's going to put his candy out on a table and tell the kids take all you want and if you have a good looking single mom please write her phone number down for me <laughs> <clears throat> I'm hoping Shannon for, forgets that for the minutes. Yeah, I know. It's just a little humor. <laughs> yeah. It was just a little humor. Come on. And all the Matt, You've done Matt. good, Steve. You've done good. I've, I've seen slingshot videos or something on Facebook regarding delivery, candy delivery services. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to injure anybody. I mean, I agree with Pete. I mean, it's like, oh, you just don't want to kill the great pumpkin. It's finally on a Saturday for these kids. No, I, and I definitely don't want trick-or-treating to be canceled. I just uh, didn't know if we had to do anything regarding it. So um, Jeff will keep us posted if there's some, some advice or guidelines from uh, the East Range Committee. All right, I'd appreciate it. And then just uh, for the, I don't know exactly the dates for the citywide cleanup. Um, I didn't see it anywhere. Today and tomorrow. And tomorrow, okay. <laughs> You haven't seen, uh, you haven't seen, like the chief said, the debris heading south on a trailer to the depot? I just got back town, so I've been on oh. vacation. I don't know. It's amazing to me that we had a massive cleanup this spring, which I thought cleaned up everybody's garage in Boabic. And now I'm seeing it again times two. I don't know where these people get this stuff. But I will say this, I talked to Lauren today, I asked him how it's going, he said a lot less this year than 
this fall than we have this spring. So. Oh yeah, it should be. Get a ton. Oh. The um, you know I wish JJ is still around because um, we I think that doesn't he do the um, recycling stuff? But my my big con contribution to uh, blight days this year was uh, or this fall was uh, my back stock of cardboard. Um, we just simply do not have enough cardboard recycling in town uh, um, with the one canister that's that's split into three. And um, you can go to our neighbors over at Aurora and they've got uh, six different uh, dumpsters lined up. I don't know what White Lakes has, but um, even, even Gilbert's got a, a large number of them. And, um, you know, we definitely could use more recycling in town. Um, but Pete, keep in mind that paper bin is not supposed to be corrugated cardboard. Well, but that, that yes. And, but if we get one for corrugated car yes. cardboard, that'd be great. So that would be great. Cause I agree with all the, am especially now with the COVID and all the Amazon shopping, there's so many cardboard boxes. And Jeff has requested that in the past from the county, and we've been told we are on their list. We did have it at one time, and it was abused, and uh, so that person quit doing it. Mindy, anything else you wanted to share? Nothing further. Okay. Councilor Senarigi. Um. I had some stuff and then I forgot to write it down and poof, it's gone. Well, one of them better um, be other than not oh, me, If you want to help, what's that? I was going to say one of them better be the why not fast tree thing because that's what it I was going to ask you to talk about. Um, so um, I'm, we're putting up um, three rather large animated trees in, in the park. Well, I see in the picture behind me, that's just the um, mock-up from the software. Um, and they are inch long, or inch wide strips. I, I thought I had one behind me. Oh, my grandson didn't get rid of it on me. Are they actually red and blue, or are they going to be different colors? Oh, no, these are, these are, uh, these are like pixels. So you... You can go and um, put this into the strap, and it's I've got a thousand foot roll outside, and um, my wife and I were outside cutting thirty four foot length straps yesterday, um, and basically you sit with uh, a um, what's it called? Um, I got this mold here that, that it goes into, and then there's a pusher, and you push it in every um, third or fourth hole, and um, before you know it, you've you've um, done one of our straps. So then these will this will keep the lights in line, um, and I've got letters to fill, candy canes. Uh, we're hoping to um, fundraise enough every year to add another ten thousand lights every year. Um, What's that cost per year to fundraise? How much is that? Uh, well, I'm over this year. <laughs> Am um, I? I let's see here. Just in lights alone, it's it's about two grand for the lights. Okay. Uh, the um, the controllers, the, the the computers that run the show, power supplies, um, electrical boxes, extension cards. Um, it's um, it's one of the nickel and dime done. Even today, I was uh, looking at having to order, um, uh, uh, what was it, um, clear shrink wrap, um, like for electrical shrink. Um, so you can label all the cords. Um, I got a great recommendation from somebody. It's like, keep it simple. If you're doing a commercial display, um, label everything on both sides. So doesn't the IRRB, Jeff, have a so program for that? tourism and that we could apply for matching grants for that? Uh, they've got IRRB Culture and Tourism. Um, and I, I don't know if it's open for cities. It's advertised as for nonprofits. Um, so BACA would probably be the more likely one. Uh, we can 
we can help with that though. Well, that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah, I'm done on the BACA. Um, the um, but yeah, to answer your question, Steve, I'm at about uh, just under seven grand on this, um, and then we're spending uh, four thousand dollars on fireworks, which has only been three thousand, and so. Uh, right now, we're looking at spending um, about three times more on Why Not Fest than we have in years past. Um, just um, you know, to make it kind of fun for the for the winter. And this is a this display is up. The lights are up from Why Not Fest until the, Pe the Pepsi uh, the Great River Energy Challenge or Pepsi Challenge, whatever it's called now. Um, and so. It certainly gets its use. And then once I'm done with the, uh, the display, um, I'm gonna allow people to um, get a copy of the, the layout and they can do their own sequencing if they wanna submit a sequence to be included. We're gonna have, um, I just ordered yesterday the uh, Adam transmitter. So you'll be able to tune into the, the, the music sync. So yeah. There's a, there's a lot going on there. So is the gold be bigger than Bentleyville one day? Different than Bentleyville. Bentleyville is all relays and, and regular lights. These are low voltage uh, computerized lights. Um, you, if you've seen that uh, Christmas light fight um, that they have on ABC, it's, that's what this is what it's, what's going to look like. So it's, um, it's a rather large hobby. So I'm hoping to get it done by uh, the end of the weekend and then put it out. So at least, you know, I'm gonna put it out in the yard and so people can see it and hopefully get some interest in what we're doing. So yeah, that's all I got for now. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bredach. Nothing for Chipper? Oh, yeah, that's right. He does sit on my left. Councillor Kavadovich. I'm good to go tonight. We used to sit together in, in a room. Yeah. Good Councilor job, Kavadovich. everybody. That's <laughs> what I got here. Uh, my only thing is, is Jeff, uh, any updates on when the Main Street project's going to wrap up and when they'll get all the cones all over and striping done? Have they talked to you at all about kind of what the schedule is? Um, just that it's gonna, it will be going in in November. Um, so they'll be working as long, um, uh, you know, as long as they don't have any snow events or anything like that. They'll, they'll, there's quite a bit left to do. They'll be here past this, uh, the September 30th date that we've talked about in the past, um, obviously. Um, so their uh, last estimate was like November 7th to 10th as the, as the wrap up date. Yeah, because it'd be nice to get some of those entrance and exits where you, you're not paying attention and you come at 40 miles an hour, but rips your front end off on some of those asphalt mm -hmm. jumps. Those lips. So, that was uh, really all I had, Jim. Hey, thanks. And the, the only thing I was going to mention, and we've covered it a couple times, was the citywide cleanup. It's, it is nice to, when, to see things being put out and it's always entertaining to watch people in the spirit of recycling and finding uh, one person's trash really is another person's treasure. So uh, I think we had a lot of things that were relocated around town over the last couple of days. <laughs> as long as they don't come to my house and go somewhere else, I'm pretty happy. You know, and I, just to throw some people are caught off guard about it and normally the same weekend we have the Wabic citywide rummage sale they're not citywide but at least the rummage sale pavilion and with COVID obviously we didn't have that so um, what are you guys doing for fundraising since you're not able to do some of those things um, that's uh, to be figured out yet uh, it's a lot of it's going to be um, uh, waiting and seeing. There might, we might end up doing some. I didn't want to do any letter writing to ask for donations. Um, 
but I might not have a choice. I mean, it's, it's so far I've paid for everything other than the, um, uh, uh, the fireworks so that we don't get billed well for that until afterwards. So, um, and then um, I'll get reimbursed for, for that. We've got most of that already, but um, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it, so we'll figure out something. I mean, we were talking about some different ways we could do that. We still got to do our ornament. Um, and then um, getting the, the board up at uh, Super One, I think that once people see what, what we're doing this year, it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, you know, so often, you know, we, we hear a lot of talk about things that are coming and then they don't happen for one reason or another. And by golly, I'm going to get these 10,000 lights I've got in my, or not, yeah, 10,000 lights I've got in my office um, out of here. <laughs> one way or the other. And they'll be in the park. Well, I know that, you know, one of the things that uh, nobody likes to ask for money, but I can tell you from what I found in Rotary is if you don't ask, nobody's going to give it to you. So, I mean, I, I know I, I would definitely share it with our Rotary members, and I would share a letter to everybody I know that's from Boavik to say, if you'd like to see the Why Not Fest be able to continue next year, please make a donation. And I, I wouldn't be embarrassed this year to send that out. This would be a good year to do that, in my opinion. I just, you know, we've gone and sent letters to businesses and so many of them are um, struggling day to day at the moment that um, I just didn't think it was going to be a, a good time to do it. But at the same time, we need there's, to do this. There's, so. there's still a lot of people that came out of Boavik as engineers, attorneys, doctors that still can afford it, that can send 20 bucks and probably wouldn't have a problem doing it if we just asked. Yep. So... All right. Well, I will get that done then. Okay, we, I believe we've come to the, the end of our business for this evening for the regular meeting. It is 7.29 p.m. Uh, we will be moving into a special meeting that will be a closed session in just a couple minutes. But I would like a motion to adjourn the regular meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn the regular meeting. Thank you, Councilor Mackey. Is there support? Support. Or I believe that was Councilor Santorigi. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. We are adjourned and we'll be moving into a closed meeting in just a moment. Is that true, uh, Jeff? Uh, yeah, Mayor, Council, and Larry, I will be sending out a, an email right now with a Zoom code and a link. Uh, and this one will have a passcode, unlike usual ones. Uh, so look for that. That should be coming through in just a second here. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for participating this evening. We'll see you soon. <laughs>